a nice fish here, Jace. Today I'm fishing with Jason Metcalf. And we've just been trolling these rock walls in the marina for starters. We're in a marina. It's a little bit windy today, so we decided to get out of the wind, troll a few lures. So I just put a little Tilson on, and uh, I'm onto a nice fish here. I haven't seen colour yet. Fishing some 20 pound Code Red Braid, 40 pound Strand Leader. And I went hard on this fish for a start just to get him out. It's a nice cod. Cracking big cod. Look at this thing. How's that for the first fish of the day? What a pretty fish, look at that. This cod absolutely crunched that Tilson and didn't he go hard? That was fun. Now we'll see if there's any more of those guys about. I'll put him back in the water and let him go. Fresh ass. Now the beauty of this is there's so much man-made structure. There's rock walls, there's pylons. And when you're fishing, you never know what you're gonna catch around it. It could be mangrove jacks, it could be cod like that guy there. It could even be trevally. So we're just gonna persist with it and we're gonna troll our little lures around that rock wall edge just to see what we come up with. And the important thing when you're doing this type of fishing is to make sure that your lure is right in the zone. And to do that, we try and keep the lure at a depth so that it's right on the edge of that rock. And that can change. So when the tide's high, you might need a deeper lure. When the tide's low, you might need a shallower lure. You might need to move in and out to suit. So at the moment, we're running these Tilsons at around about eight to 10 feet deep. And I'm following the sounder on the, just here, just making sure that I keep the boat in the zone. And of course, the lure trailing behind it. So we'll give it another go and see what we come up with. Right back in the zone there now. I'm in around about that 12 foot out here with the boat, but I've got my rod tip out, so I'm in a couple foot closer. I reckon that that lure's in around about nine foot of water. I'm well, swimming through nine feet of water, and it's got to be down around about eight feet, so it's right on the edge of those rocks. My drag set, it's really tight, nice and tight. I don't want to uh, get busted off, so I have got some drag there, but I want to be able to steer a big mangrove jacket if I happen to hook one, because that's what I'm hoping for this afternoon. Rolling rock walls can be a little dangerous, especially when they're covered in oysters. Now those sharp oysters are what the, the fish that live in these, the, along these rocks uses as home and food. A lot of the times, as soon as they come out and grab something, that's, they've got to wrestle it and they drag it back through all these oyster encrusted rocks. So it doesn't matter how big your leader is sometimes, under pressure, with the fish screaming in there, as soon as they hit those oysters, ching! Yep, Jace, I'm on, I'm on. Go, Jace, go. <laughs> oh, I got him, I got him. Oh, I think it might be another cod, Jace, I'm not sure. As you can see, you've got to go hard right at the start and give these fish nothing. You can't give them an inch. If the line snaps, it's too bad. You just can't give them an inch. Those rocks are just encrusted with oysters. They're super sharp. They're worn out now. Got him out, it's another big cod. <laughs> uh, mightn't be as big as the last one. I actually felt him nick the rocks a couple of times, this fish. Oh, he's nowhere near as big as the last one, but geez. Jace, if we hook a jack up, it's gonna be hard in here, I tell ya. So much rock. Another little coddly doodly. I actually straightened hooks on him. Popping straight back. That's the lure doing the damage and you'll see that I was going so hard that one of the hooks that pulled out actually didn't straighten but it opened up a little bit. So I'm certainly not mucking around with these fish. Beautiful. is to get these lures in nice and close, as Jace was saying. Uh, I'm banging away there. The Tilson Barra is just bouncing off a couple of rocks in there as we go along. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm moving it with my rod, so the boat's moving at a steady speed. But I'm pulling the rod forward and laying the rod back. That does two things. It speeds the lure up and stops the lure. It speeds the lure up and then stops the lure. And it, if, if there's a predator watching it, and uh, it's following it and all of a sudden it speeds up it might think that it's been sprung and it's time to whack that uh, that lure which is our lure but the other thing you can do is if you 
bring it forward and you hit a snag, you can throw it back and it allows the lure to come back up a bit and sneak back over the top. A lot of times when you're doing that, when you pull forward really quickly and you throw it back and the predators fly up behind it and then all of a sudden it stops right in front of their face. They've got to make that decision whether they eat it or not. But a lot of times when it stops back in their face, that's when they do it. So you'll pull forward and you'll take the pressure off and it'll bang, on you go. Awesome fun. Just coming back in on the rock wall there now. I'm just trying to angle us so that we come in on it. And if I feel the lure bump the rocks every now and then, I'm not going to get too worried. I might just lift my rod tip just to steer it up over the rocks. I want it to be right in the zone, so right near those rocks. Because a lot of these fish are ambush feeders. They're going to be hiding in there, just waiting for little bait fish to swim past. And that's when they're going to dart out of the shadows of their little rocky hidey hole and pounce on our lures. So we're right in there close now. Snags are inevitable when you're having a troll along these rocks. The trick is not to drive your lure in hard. If you get snagged, Button, nice and soft, no more pressure, and then just idle back over the top. Give it a couple of flicks, and then just keep going past. A lot of times, one little flick, and out she comes. Hear that? No swearing, mate. I'll beep it out. He's got me, he's got me. Oh, no, he hasn't. Oh, this thing's incredible. Holy dooly, look at me go on it. <laughs> oh. No way. No fish should pull that ass. Oh. I'm gonna. No, I'm not. I'm trying to think whether I should back the drag off because he's had me in the rocks three times, this fish, and they're just totally encrusted with oysters, so hopefully down there a bit deeper, they're not too bad. He's a bit closer now, I've just taken the drag off a couple clicks. One of the runs that he did was about five metres long after I thought I had him. He went straight back in there, so this is definitely the best fish so far, and I want to see what it is. So I've just gone a little lighter on him now, I don't want to pull hooks at the last minute. Oh, look at the size of this cod. Look at the size of this thing. <laughs> that on bait cast tackle. How good is that? Oh, absolutely smashed that little tilly. <laughs> that is a cracker. Grab the leader if you have to. Oh, have a look at you. <laughs> that is a cracking cod. Look at you. That is a magnificent fish. Oh, that's well done getting that out of there. Geez, that fish went hard. I didn't think I was going to get it. And I really wanted to see what it was. That's always the thing when you're fishing around these rock walls, you never know what you're going to get. And that's a cracking big cod. It would have passed as a jack. It went for a big run. I don't know what to say. I got him. I didn't think I was going to. I thought I was going to get dusted. Check him out. He just munched that little Tilson Barra. Absolutely loved it. I never thought I was going to get that fish. I shouldn't have got that fish. He had me in the rocks about three times. Mate, check you out. And I'm going to let this fella go just over here. Here we go, mate. Pop him back in there. Give him a bit of a swim. There he goes. Happy as. Catch you later. <laughs> How good's that? Three fish in about five minutes trolling rock wall.